Best seen of Kansas City Joe. Exterior, road to Kansas City, day. Mary's hands tremble as she drags her footsteps. She has been running all night away from Kansas City and is emotionally and physically spent. She stops to let her breath catch up with her racing thoughts. Mary sees Preacher riding with a bay in tow, approaching from Kansas City. She sighs relief and waves. Preacher rides up, tips his floppy hat. Howdy, ma'am. What's a pretty little thing like you doing out here all alone? My home was ransacked by renegades. At least I think that's what they were. I need to get back to my family. I'm worried that they... A tear rolls down Mary's cheek. Preacher, can you help me? Your servant, ma'am. Thank God I found you. He does work in mysterious ways. Mary looks the bay up and down. A handsome bay? What's his name? Can you ride? If you promise a gentle pace, then a proper saddle won't be required. <laughs> well, now let's at least throw a blanket over him for you. Preacher dismounts. He fumbles with a leather strap on the saddlebag. Oh, my hands aren't as steady as they used to be. Be a dear and open it for me. Mary unleashes the first strap of the saddlebag. Preacher loops behind Mary, undressing her with his eyes. Mary unleashes the second strap of the saddlebag. The sun sparkles off the candlestick from her bedroom. The bag is full of her family's possessions. Preacher grabs Mary from behind, pulling her to the ground. As Mary tumbles, she attempts to grab a hold of the saddlebag, emptying some of its contents onto the ground, one of which is the candlestick. A tussle ensues, and Preacher tries to free Mary from her nightgown, ripping it several times in the process. Mary's free hand finds the candlestick. She wallops Preacher across the head so hard that he releases his grips and drops to the ground. Mary drops the candlestick, leaps upon the bay, and charges off down the road. I know where to find you! Interior, Dice Home, Parlor, Day. The curtains are shut and the room is dim. Caskets center the room as visitors pass by them to, make, to pay their respects. Mary and Joan, dressed all in black, barely hold it together as they greet visitors. Mary shakes the hand of the last visitor in line to see her. Oh, Joan, where do we go from here? I don't know what to do. Joan comforts Mary with a long embrace. I do. Interior, Dice Home, Mary's Bedroom, Day. Mary picks up a newspaper and she sets it upon the dresser. Mary opens a sewing box and retrieves from within a spool of black ribbon and a pair of scissors. Mary cuts two lengths of ribbon and crosses the portraits of her parents. Mary flops upon her bed. She breaks down in tears. Mary gathers herself enough to open the newspaper. She stops short as the headline grabs her attention. Insert newspaper headline. Kansas City Joe rides again. Kansas City Joe tracked two men to a saloon in Kansas City and shot them down. Law authorities treated the incident as a fair fight. To date, Kansas City Joe has shot down five men in the same manner, a bullet between the eyes. Lawlessness runs rampant west of the Missouri River, and Kansas City Joe roams the plains like a specter. Joan? Interior, Jack's Tavern, later. A handful of patrons refresh with drinks on this hot summer day. Jack serves at the bar. Joan bellied up to the bar. Joan is all dusty and sweaty after a hard day scouting. Joan, you look like you lost a bet. I went scouting after the funeral and found their hideout. The preacher, half-breed, and their whole damn gang are holed up in the old Briggs farmhouse, just outside of town. Front, front porch has an east facing, so I'll have the sun to my back just after dawn. Mary barges in through the front door. She's dressed all in black and holds high a newspaper. Joan! All faces turn towards Mary. Joan and Jack turn to Mary. We need to talk. Why don't you two take this upstairs where you can have some privacy? in Tavern Hotel Room 22. I was looking for Mom and Dad's obituary when I came across some news about Kansas City Joe. Please don't believe that trash they write in the Kansas City Times. Mary stares into Joan's eyes. Did you really kill all those people? They had it coming. I remember the day we met Sissy. She loved riding her pony, Dash. Sissy and I gentled her together. I miss her. I miss Mom. I miss Dad. I can't lose you too, Joan. Joan takes Mary into her arms. We've both lost too much. I found those snakes. It's going to get bloody. I'm going to put an end to this. I'm going with you. No! You stay here and let me do what I'm good at. Exterior, Briggs Farmhouse, Day. 
gunshots ring out amongst the chaos inside and outside Briggs Farmhouse. Joan and her posse are besting the preacher, half-breed, and their renegades. Preacher crashes through a first floor window, mounts his horse, and speeds away in a cloud of dust. Joan springs from the front door in pursuit of the preacher. She calls to Snoozer as she runs in the direction of the preacher. Snoozer approaches Joan, and she mounts him mid-gallop. We can't let him get away. Snoozer pushes on a little faster as Joan pats him, but Preacher's expanding the space between. I know this must hurt, but I need everything you've got, old friend. Everything and then some. Joan gives Snoozer the spurs. Joan, Snoozer takes off like a shot. They quickly begin to make up ground on the Preacher. That's it, boy. Just a little more. Snoozer is charging as fast as he can, heaving with each breath, giving it his all. Joan raises her Colt 38 and takes aim. Today is a good day to die. Joan takes a breath, exhales, and fires. The bullet finds its mark and drops the preacher from his saddle. Joan and Snoozer ride up to the fallen preacher who lays bleeding on the ground. Preacher tips his hat to see Joan standing with the sun behind her. Joan points her colt at the preacher. Quick fade to brilliant white, fade out. <laughs>